Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I've got a fountain pen focus for you. And we're going to focus on this. This is the Visconti Breeze. It was the cheapest Visconti pen that I could find when I bought it. Also, my first Visconti pen. I do like this material. It's quite unusual. Just show you that. It's called Blueberry. Quite nice. Join me now down on the mat. We'll take a look at the pen, walk through the body, do some size comparisons, some weights and measures, a writing sample, then I'll give you my thoughts and some scores for this pen. Welcome down to the table. Visconti Breeze, here we go. This gorgeous blueberry colour. We've got the swirls there, we've got different shades of blue, we've got some dark blues, mainly a pale blue. We have got hints there of whites and greys and a bit of silver. Quite nice. Let's take a walk through the body. So the pen, it's a very simple shape. We start at the top, it's domed. The cap, all one piece, so we don't have any separate screw-on parts. Into the top of the cap, we've got embedded this silver-coloured clip. Got Visconti there, you know, it's a nice springy clip. Let's just show you that. So the cap, I'd say it's domed, comes down as soon as it comes off the top, it's the same width all the way down. The bottom of the cap there is plastic. This ring is part of the body. So we come down the bottom of the cap. You can feel the drop off down to that ring. Then there on the ring, let's see if we can get this right. We've got breeze, breeze again, and breeze again. So very simple, a little bit of a pattern in there on the back. There is a little step up from that silver colored ring up to the body. The body, same color as the cap, same width, seems to be tapering down ever so slightly as we go down the body at the end again we've got a dome and we've got a little silver or well silver colored dot there at the bottom the cap it pulls off now this is a magnetic cap so i'll just show you this before we look at the nib I'm going to gently just tap this with my finger then all of a sudden bang do that one more time when that magnet when that magnet catches that clips on Nice gimmick, not sure about how practical it is. Doesn't seem overly stiff when I'm taking it off. The section, same coloured material as the rest of the pen. If I unscrew the section, we've got the converter. The converter came with it. This is about maybe three quarters full at the moment. Let's pop that back on. And then we'll take a look at the business end, the nib. The nib, it's a teeny weeny tiny nib, a very small looking nib. Don't let that fool you, it writes nicely. Now I have heard reports that the nibs can be a bit inconsistent. I've got two Visconti pens with steel nibs, both of them been fine, both of them had no problems, but just be aware of that. You know, over the back there we've got the plastic feed. Let's swap on over. We'll do some size comparisons. My first size comparison, standard pens, Pilot Metropolitan, Lamy Safari. With the cap on, all three pens, I've got to be honest, to me, they're the same length. One thing you can see different though, is the widths. You know, the Pilot Metropolitan definitely looks that little bit narrower. Let's take the caps off. With the caps off, this is where we can see there's some differences now. The Breeze, it's the shortest of the three. Only a teeny little bit shorter than the Metropolitan, but a noticeable difference between the Safari and the Breeze. If we look at the nibs, you can see here what I mean by it being a small nib. To my eye, it's slightly smaller than the nib that I've got on my Pilot Metropolitan. Definitely smaller than the nib on the Safari. The pen itself is quite comfortable to hold. It's got a nice bit of width to it down there in the section. Very little in the way of concaveness. I think it's slight, 
tiny, but that could just be more my eyes than the actual pen. But it does feel comfortable. Not overly long, long enough to use unposted. It will post. Feels back heavy when I post it. I don't use this pen posted. Let's swap it over and look at all the pens posted. Posted the Breeze ever so slightly longer than the Safari. We're talking a couple, maybe three millimeters. Definite size difference though there to the Metropolitan. We'll swap on over and we'll look at some pens in roughly the same price range. The two pens I've brought in, the Pelican M205, that's the steel nibbed version. That was 152 Aussie dollars. The Visconti Breeze, this was the cheapest Visconti pen I could find, 163 Aussie dollars. And the Bennu Talisman, this particular one is Dragon's Blood. When I got this, it was 167 Aussie dollars. Posted the Talisman ever so slightly longer. Both pens, they make that M205 look minute, don't they? Let's look at them unposted. Unposted, what a difference. The M205 and the Breeze, very roughly the same length. You can notice the difference though in the width. That the Stronti ever so slightly wider. And you can really feel that when you're writing with it. The Bennu, definitely longer than the other two. The other thing is, look at the nibs. We've got these small nibs on the M205 and the Breeze. Both of them write really well though. Whereas on the Bennu, I think that's a number six size nib. It's a Schmidt nib. Let's pop the caps on these. With the caps on, the Bennu, two, three millimeters shorter than the Breeze. Again, noticeable difference down to that M205. Let's swap on over. We'll fetch in the rule of measuring. Here we've got the rule of measuring. So the length of the entire pen. That comes in at 14 centimetres. Unposted, 12.2 centimetres. Posted, just sit that there. That's 16.5 centimetres. The width of the body, 1.3 centimetres. Width of the cap, 1.4 centimetres. The section, goes from 1.1 up to 1.2 centimetres. So there is a slight change, but it's hard to really see that. Let's swap on over and fetch in the scales of weighing. Here's the scales of weighing, the full pen, 30 grams. Body only, remember about three quarters full of ink. Stop it from rolling too far. There we go, 18 grams cap. 11 grams. Nice weight, you can feel the pen in your hand when you're writing. It's time to swap over and fetch in the notepad of testing. Here we've got the notepad of testing. I use paper, 100 GSM paper. This is an A4 pad. Very nice, slight texture to the paper. This is a part of any review, whether I'm filming it myself or watching someone else's that I like, the writing sample. So we've got here a Visconti Breeze with a broad nib. The cost was 163 Aussie dollars. The ink is by Diamine and it's Red Dragon. I know a bit of a controversial thing, this isn't it? Blue pen, red ink. I actually think the contrast it looks quite nice. I like this red dragon. It's an ink I don't use often enough. Drying times, so we go immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. One minute. After a minute, we're nice and dry. Is there any line variation? So there's no pressure. This is adding some pressure. Definitely seeing a wider line. So no pressure with, none with. It's not a flex nib and I am pressing down with a fair bit of force. 
not enough to spring the tines, but just be aware that, yeah, possibly you can get that. Flow test, so forwards, and then backwards. Keeps up really well. I'll move the mic down to the page and write a sentence. Lovely feedback on this nib. Very nice to write with. You've got that, that audible feedback. You've also got a nice little bit of a tactile feedback so you can feel it through your fingers. Quite nice. So what are my thoughts and scores for this pen? Let's start by looking at pen looks. I actually quite like the material. I think it's nice. It's unusual. You know, is it something I could take to a business meeting? I'm a bit dubious about that. Sat at a desk in an office, I wouldn't be too worried. It's nice. It doesn't feel $163 worth. We'll talk about that when we get down to the, the value for money. It's still nice. It feels okay. It feels solid. Looks really nice. So for pen looks, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Build quality. Again, no issues with the build quality. Everything goes nicely. The threads you know, unscrew and screw nicely. The converter fills nice. It's solid when it's together. We don't get any like wobbling in the body. Not sure about the cap, but that's just, that's my really me being very, very picky. But build quality, eight out of 10. Writing experience, as we can see, very nice. I know it's a red ink bit in your face isn't it i do actually like this ink color i need to use it more often i think it does make quite a nice contrast like the feedback it feels really really nice when i'm writing with it i'm gonna give it for writing experience a nine out of ten it's very nice it doesn't hurt my hand you know we'll talk about that in comfort ink flow here's my tom I river 52 gsm paper visconti breeze diamine red dragon i've said there Concerned about the comma, but I do like the contrast. I think it does look nice. Nice line, not much in the way of shading or anything like that. So not a lot of character coming out through the ink. Didn't expect too much though. Talk about how I like the ink color. Again, there we've got my swipe tests. All in all, very nice. Ink flows really well. No hard starts, no issues with skipping. Nice broad line as well. Ink flow, 8 out of 10. Comfort, I say it's not too thin, so it's comfortable to use. I've used this for multiple page note-taking sessions, no issues. It feels a bit light, feels a bit short. Is postable? I wouldn't because I, although it's going resin onto resin, hopefully I can, it helps if I show you rather than looking down myself. So it's just resin in there. And in that cap, I don't know if you can actually see it. There's a liner down at the bottom. Comfort-wise, I say it's not too bad. 8 out of 10. Value for money. It's a lot of money. $163 for this pen is an awful lot of money. It's nice. Yes, it's Italian. It's a teeny weeny teeny weeny baby steel nib. Quite small. Writes really well, so... It doesn't matter that it's a small nib. What matters is how it writes. I'd still like to have seen a number six size nib on there. The material, it's nice enough, but again, doesn't jump out as much as some other materials that I've got in pens in this price range. I think if this had been more like $100, that would have been a more suitable price. But I say, maybe I'm just whinging over nothing. I mean, it's all right. It does what I want. It lets me get ideas out of my head and onto paper in a manner that I enjoy. I just enjoy paying less for it. So for value for money, I can only give it a 7 out of 10. So that means the total score for the Visconti Breeze with Diamine Red Dragon is 8 out of 10.
I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What are your thoughts on the Visconti Breeze? Have you got one? Have you got any of the other Visconti models? My only other Visconti is the Van Gogh, but I know there's things like the Rembrandt. There's a number of other pens between them in terms of price. Please drop any comments down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.